And so once the kids have, start having these things as value, you know, they've got value in game. Okay, Christopher? Yes. Yeah. <sighs> <sighs> targeted psyops ops against these kids because they know what motivates these kids. Right. But where, but where are the kids, where, where, where are the, okay, I, I, I get, I get the, I get the whole marketing ploy and the submersive, you know, BS that's behind looping our, tracking our uh, kids and looping them in. But in, in terms of how, how kids that age are, are able to access, um, you know, uh, hundreds of dollars and convert it to thousands of dollars and then reroute that money somewhere else to buy something somewhere else. I mean, and, and, and nowhere, are, are there adults, at least on the software app side, um, there are, doesn't appear to be any filters. Like, how, how do, you know, how does this sort of come about? How does this go from a, a kid spending, you know, 10 bucks? Associate with it. So, uh, CSGO, for example, uh, was a recent culprit of a problem that I was encountering. Uh, the, 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 the kid basically got um, a skin, which he won from a loot box. It was a 0.026% drop for a chance for a yellow item with box, whatever he wanted. And so he went over to the marketplace and he was able to cash out. So what happens is these, these marketplaces, um, some of the value of these items, they, they can go into tens of thousands of dollars. It's quite insane. These are often used for money laundering, but they're also often used for, for some of these players who are collectors who have money in the bank. Um, and so there are a number of different ways that these kids get access to it. A lot of these things come from various on uh, off ramps because what you can do is you can convert a lot of these into and then you can go over to a central exchange like Coinbase, uh, 13 year olds with parental consent can get on there, or MetaMask uh, can give you a... Whoa, 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 back up, back up. 13 mm -hmm. year olds with parental consent. How are the 13 year olds without parental consent getting on there? Good question. Uh, but I assume that most parents, when they see these things, they just say, oh, I'll just approve this. It's an app for my, my, my kid. Ah, uh, okay. It's, right? it's, it's not obvious to them. I, I, well, you know, it's just for, from the kid's perspective. Can you, you know, just authenticate this so I can, you know, do this? And uh, I assume that not all the parents that are, are approving this are aware of exactly what they're approving. Because, just, you know, again, they're, they're, they're approving access to get these kids into central exchanges for cryptocurrency. They can get them uh, e-transfers over to bank accounts and stuff like that. So there's ways that, that you know, kids can, can get access to these, uh, to these games, uh, win these tremendous loot prizes, and then cash out. Um, and, and it, it, you know, because it's, it's using a lot of automated software, a lot of these things are based on mobile devices and so on and so forth. There's, there's, there's little intervention that would happen. So when do, when do uh, you know? Let's get to let's get to you and your counseling skills and and, and what we tell parents and and, and kids alike. Uh, what, you know, when does when should a parent be concerned? Like at what point should a parent be concerned that their child is not just playing a video game and winning a few trinkets, but it's actually gaming and gambling and they're wired to it? Well, <laughs> that's a really good question. A lot of it would happen in terms of watching what happens to the repercussions to the kid, right? Um, is this affecting the kid's life, right? And it has this creep into their life. Uh, how much time are they investing in this? How much money are they investing into this? You know, uh, basically being aware of what your kids are doing. How is this thing modifying their behavior, right? Are, are they demonstrating, um, you know, uh, changes to their school, to their friends? Are they isolating more, right? Uh, these are different ways that parents could be aware of it, but generally speaking, you know, the, the, the best way to manage this is to teach healthy gaming habits with kids in the first place, which is what I did, uh, you know, with my kid, because, you know, he grew up gaming just with me, we played together, so we normalized a lot of good, healthy gaming habits, right, and that includes uh, dealing with these, uh, these, these types of games, these, these free-to-play games, which, you know, they can be quite insidious. I appreciate you joining us tonight, Corey. Thank you very much. I'm talking to Corey Copeland. He's the co-founder and lead uh, peer support at Recover at Home. You can reach him at recoveratthome.com, uh, I believe, and uh, we'd be uh, he'd be happy to help you. Uh, but uh, thank you so much, Corey. We'll have you back on again because this isn't going away anytime soon. Uh, with a couple of minutes that we have left, I did dig up some points here, some tips 
uh, if you will, that, pa that parents might be able to use uh, to uh, to work through this a little bit. It's, uh, so use tools to control purchases on connected devices or gaming platforms. Build into your pocket money systems. Make sure that as kids <laughs> really watch a particular game, you know, do some, some, some work on it ahead of time. Do some research. Make sure that you understand what the platform looks like. Never share your credit card details with your child. Give them the number and say, okay, you try to give me the card back later. Set rules or limits around anything that looks or smells like a loot box. Somewhere where a kid can accumulate money and things and buy things and so on. Make sure there's a limit to 20 bucks, 30 bucks. Uh, whatever is in your uh, within your own personal wheelhouse and like Corey said he couldn't have said it better sit down with your kids watch them play hang out with them find out what they spend money on maybe it's something you can do together i know there's some great games out there where you can build communities and homes and you can decorate them and so on and so forth you know yeah it costs a little bit of money but you know it might be something you want to do with your kids and, and, you know and as a way to teach them about value and teach them about what monetary uh, transactions actually look and feel like when you win some and when you lose some. I particularly